Happy Halloween and welcome back to Cardiades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with six months of set theory and higher order logic looking at a very spooky, spooky topic. Is the universal class infinite? Okay, maybe that's not that spooky. But infinity is scary. Infinity is such a crazy big concept and it's something that we're going to get to more of in this theory in this series and set theory is going to let us talk about in a way that our first order logic didn't let us talk about. When we get farther in the series we're going to prove some interesting properties about infinity such as the claim that you can have bigger or smaller infinities which is very counterintuitive. If you want more on that check out my video on Cantor's paradox. For now we'll get our first glimpse of infinity with the universal class. Now with only axioms 1 through 3, our universe might only be the set of the null set. It could be bigger, but it might just be the set of the null set. But once we've included the pairing axiom, axiom 4, our universe must be much bigger. Since the null set is a set, the set containing the null set and the null set is a set by the pairing axiom. We've already proved that any set of A and A is identical to A. We'll call it the twin set theorem. So the set of the null set and the null set is identical to the set of the null set. This means that at least the null set and the set of the null set are sets. And the set of the null set can't be the universal class because the universal class is a class and not a set, which we proved a while ago. So there have to be at least two members of the universal class and there probably need to be more. The question we really want to answer is whether the universal class is infinite. We want set theory to do so much work for us and one of the things we want it to do for us is to help us represent numbers and talk about counting numbers and talk about rational numbers and real numbers and all of these different things and most of those categories are infinite. And so if the building blocks we have to talk about something aren't infinite, we're going to have trouble talking about it. We're going to have trouble with different sets representing different numbers if we only have a limited finite number of sets and we have an infinite number of numbers. So we need to find out, have we added enough axioms to force our universal class to be infinite yet? We're not going to do a formal proof of this because we're not going to get the tools needed to do that until we get up to piano arithmetic and mathematically inductive proofs, not scientific induction, mathematical induction, which is different. Check out my video on piano arithmetic if you want a preview, but in a future month we are going to do a very basic step-by-step -step view on piano arithmetic. But for now we're going to do a bit of an informal proof to just give you the intuition and show you how we can get there with just on a basic level, not a formal level. So, first off, we'll start with the null set as a set by axiom three. Since the null set is a set, the set of the null set and the null set is a set by the pairing axiom. Let me see if I can do this long tongue twister. Since the set of the null set and the null set is identical to the set of the null set by the double set theorem, the set of the null set is a set. So we have two sets now. Number one gave us the null set and the set of the null set is a set. So we now have two sets. Since the set of the null set is a set, the set of the set of the null set and the set of a null set is a set by the pairing axiom, doing the same thing we did in 2 to the null set alone. Since the set of the set of the null set and the set of the null set is identical to the set of the set of the null set by the double set theorem, the set of the set of the null set is a set. And it's a different set than our previous two sets. If you're curious how we would prove that, because you might say, well, the set of the set of the null set has one member and so does the set of the null set, so maybe they're the same member. The thing we proved in the last video, the, the set of A is equal to the set of B if and only if A equals B, that's how you would prove it. We're not going to go to it in depth here, but basically it says that we can drop off brackets one at a time. So we would drop off one bracket from the set of the set of the null set, and we would drop off one bracket of the set of the null set, and we would get the question of, is the null set equal to the set of the null set? Well, it's not, because one has zero members and one has one member. So that hopefully will give you a basic intuition of why those aren't equal and why this has to be a third set that we're dealing with. 
So, since the set of the set of the null set is a set, then the set of the set of the set of the null set and the set of the set of the null set is a set by the pairing axiom. Since the set of the set of the set of the null set and the set of the set of the null set is identical to the set of the set of the set of the null set by the double set theorem, the set of the set of the null set, no, the set of the set of the set of the null set is a set. Whew, see, I told you it's a tongue twister. It's going to get harder. So we now have four sets. And hopefully you see where this is going, but just for comedy's sake, I'll try to do this one. Since the set of the set of the set of the null set is a set, then the set of the set of the set of the set of the null set and the set of the set of the set of the null set is a set by the pairing axiom. It starts just sounding like nonsense. Since the set of the set of the set of the null set, no, since the set of the set of the set of the set of the null set and the set of the set of the set of the null set is identical to the set of the set of the set of the set of the null set, by the double set theorem, the set of the set of the set of the set of the null set is a set. Whew! We need a way to simplify this notation. Oh no, I made more. All right, since the set of the set of the set of the set of the null set is a set, then the set of 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 the null set and the set of the set of the set of the set of the null set is a set by the pairing axiom. And so, since the set of 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 the null set and the set of the set of the set of the set of the null set is identical to the set of 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 the null set by the double set theorem, then the set of 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 the null set is a set. Whew! I didn't know this Halloween episode was going to be scary for me just trying to say words. Hopefully, you have the intuition that this could go on forever. And because all of those are sets, and the universal class is defined as having as its members all the sets, and all the sets are members of the universal class, the universal class is infinite. Could go on and on, but we're not going to torture me anymore. All right, now that we have a universal class that is infinite, we can start exploring some of the set relations which we will need to model all of mathematics. In the next series, which is planned to start in February, Pay attention on Twitter and Facebook and all those things in case it ends up getting delayed, but as of now, it's planned to start in February. We're going to look at relations between sets and classes like unions, intersections, ordered pairs, power sets, relations, functions, Cartesian products, ranges, domains, and more. But for now, happy Halloween! Stay tuned for more set theory and higher order logic in February. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org. Thank you to anyone that made it all the way through all of these videos uh, to make it here. You are really learning quite a lot about set theory, um, and there's, there's more to come. So stay skeptical, everybody.